Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. I know it's been a little bit of a while. It's been about 10 days now, but we just came back from California, which is a six hour flight away from where I am. I had to go play monthly finals. If you guys didn't know what happened, you guys have come to the right place. We're going to show you guys all the games, the drafts, exactly what happened. With that being said, let's just hop right into it. So on parallel plays, the best brawler is sam you guys see they took jesse number one so we had to take sam into jesse which is one of sam's best counters because if they have the sam it's going to be really really easy for them to win because we took it early and they already have a counter into sam they're going to now take another counter into sam let's click it and get through this a little bit quicker so you guys can see they take tara and amber now sam could play into amber pretty well but the tara is really difficult you guys are going to see that as we go on we end up taking squeak sixth pick we feel like that's a really good pick into their comp it does good into all three brawlers so getting into the game they have the amber on defense the tara on attack which i don't know if that's smart by them or not but we end up getting a nice double kill here I think Sans should be holding his 3k there and pushing up into Charles. Instead, he takes a shot. He misses. We didn't really get in there until very late. Uh, I messed up my gadget. And honestly, I don't even know where my glove went. But Patchy stays on one shot. Now, Chino's in the grass with his pull. And as is Sam, it's like, what can you really do? Like, you have to be one tile away from someone in order to hit them. And Chino's just camping, waiting it out. Good ca gadget over there by Patchy. Sans misses a 3k shot on Patchy, which allows him to live, and now it's kind of just like, what do we even do? So, I'm able to kill Patchy and get in their zone, but they're also in our zone at the same time, so it makes things kind of weird. You guys can see in that small window over there, they're able to deal with it, and we actually have more of their zone right now than they have of ours, so... For us, we see it as we're winning the game. I know technically on the score we're not, but it's a lot easier to get your zone than it is to get the other team's zone. And like I said, here's the counter. I missed my gadget again, but it's like, it's so difficult. It's like, what do you even do into that once you get gadgeted by the Jesse? They push into us really well. Zara unfortunately goes down. And at this point, there's a Jesse turret up top. There's a Tara in the zone. There's two of them in the zone. So um, I go down. Zar goes down, Sans is one shot, he goes down, and that kind of seals up the game. So they take game number one, and I wouldn't say it was the worst played. I think we have about 78 to 80% if we take our entire zone. So going into game number two over here, uh, Sans hits a really good shot on Chino, which allows... which puts chino back which allows me to walk up and then i get a quick kill on patchy and this is why sam is so good because even though i'm burnt and i should be dying i can just throw these gloves off the wall and it just doesn't affect me at all if i just ignore once one person so let's say i ignore the tara even though i do get the kill there if i ignore the tara and just got shot at by the amber over and over and over and i'm just healing i'm gonna get an insane amount of zone time so this is a really great start i waste my gloves over there i don't really know what i'm doing over there I should have done a lot more throwing gloves off of walls instead of throwing my gloves at people. Like, look at this. I spawn again. I just get solo pulled. Uh, luckily for me, though, Chino does kind of mess that up. So I'm able to get the kill and walk up at a really good time because Charles ends up winning their zone. So if they killed me and they had full position, uh, they probably really easily come back. So I'm standing in the zone. I'm trying to take as long as I can. Um, I think that's a little bit of a waste of a turret from Patchy. I mean, they do get me out, but kind of at what cost, you know? Like, they're, they're wasting that turret. They obviously need more time in our zone. As you guys can see, we're easily just ticking up the score just by, like, staying neutral. Again, you know, I kind of just spawn in and get pulled. Now, this is a really good play by Chino. He gets two of us and gets zone time. Um, I don't know what I should have done here, but I believe I made the right play by going for Charles. I think most people probably would have just tried to run up and go for the zone. But I knew against the Amber, I would die, but I could at least trade it out. And then with my teammates respawning as well. I felt like they could hold it down pretty easily given the brawlers that they're on. Um, we're able to get Patchy kind of barely. And then I'm also kind of barely able to get Chino. All we got to do is hold for 10 more seconds, which, I mean, it's a 3v1. Not too hard for us to do. And, uh, and there we go. And that is us winning game number two. There's Zar, you know, looking great. Looking a little bit zesty with his uh, legs crossed, but looking great at his Airbnb in Mexico. Um, and with that being said, we're going to go into game number three. So same thing. Like I said before, I'm trying to just kind of ignore the Tara and just walk around on that side. I didn't do it the best. Going into this month, um, we were doing as bad as we've done in a really long time in scrims. So just going into this month, it didn't feel as promising as before. 
you know, usually we feel really confident going into it draft-wise, gameplay-wise, all that. But this was as least confident as I felt in a long time. You know, I'm not trying to necessarily make excuses, but that's just how I was feeling going into this. Um, we're able to get a pretty nice kill over there, but they have position of our zone. Chino's already out of gadgets. So with that being said, now Sans can kind of have a way easier time of killing Chino because Tar is pretty good into B with the pets, but now that it doesn't have pets, I mean, it's pretty easy to pretty easy to take out but it's it's just so hard to push into this like you guys can see chino has that pull there's kind of just like no way i can push into that and if i do push into that it's kind of like well then the jesse's gonna get turret something that we talk about a lot on our team is getting value out of the sixth pick which is going to be a really common theme throughout this video we're going to talk about that a lot um, and we just didn't get any value out of it i mean it was kind of not dumb but it was it, it was you know bold of us to take the sam we knew we had to take sam or else it was over so i mean we got the sixth pick out of it maybe we could have taken something a little bit better like sprout maybe like willow something along those lines uh but unfortunately for us you know we're just not able to win this game over here it didn't get the right value that we wanted out of the sixth pick getting spun on a little bit by charles over there the monkey pin thrown up but that is going to be set number one for luminosity all right so going into the next map at safe zone this is stmn's best map ever since you know i don't know a couple of years back it used to be shooting star but it switched to safe zone um we banned sam because again cmg right before us played tribe and they ran through tribe going sam we felt like patchy was going to do the same you guys can see it's a range map but look at their bands griff shelly and otis they were definitely going for the sam so something we didn't want to deal with was a grom we didn't want to first pick it but we also didn't want to face it and then they're really comfortable on 8-bit and we never go it so that was kind of the reasoning for our three bands they go brock and eve which we knew they would go into bell that was kind of just uh a little bit too obvious by them i ended up you know being able to get the piper which is really nice and then we're going to combine it with the roughs so the thought process for us is we break that mid wall you guys are going to see it when we get into the game the mid wall is really annoying but once you break it it really opens up the map in all angles the only issue is we're all really squishy so something like a sprout a squeak a tick most people say would do really well into our comp they end up going out and picking daryl and this is exactly what we wanted them to pick so basically the entire draft is exactly what we wanted we got myself on a comfort brawler sans on a comfort brawler and all of us can play rough so zara's just gonna fill the shoes for this set so patchy's gonna go in i think zara's gotta do a little bit more at the start but he does something really good which he breaks the wall i'm gonna go back here i think a lot of you guys can learn from this he's gonna break the wall and then he's gonna get his final shot versus hitting patchy again and then shooting the reason he does this is because now he's got that tree on the ground, but he is five shots or five ticks or whatever you call them, five hits from the next rough super versus being seven ticks away. And you can do this with all brawlers. You guys are going to see many times in this game, I'm going to take a shot with Piper and then jump while the shot is, you know, mid air. The reason I do this is because if that shot lands, when I jump, I'm going to get that hit back. So I'm closer to my next super. You can do this with all brawlers. Obviously, some brawlers is easier to do with than others. Uh, but with that being said, now Zart is treated up. Sans is treated up. I am treated up. And it's like, what can Patchy even do? Like, we have a treated up Bell versus Eve, which is a really free matchup. We have a treated up Piper versus a Brock. I mean, just look how this Brock walks out of spawn. Like, he gets hit one time by me, he's dead. If I hit him right now, he's dead. Patchy's marked, he can't really do much. I hit Chino one time, he's dead. And this allows me to just focus Patchy. I hit him two times and he's just forced back into his spawn. And you guys gotta remember, these are our comfort brawlers. You guys are gonna see right there, I shoot and then jump. So I don't get the hit, but if I do when, when, uh, when I land, I'm only gonna be two shots to super instead of three. I mean, you guys could see game one, it went really well. Luckily for us, CMG and Patchy's team play very, very similar types of brawl stars and we scrim versus toast team a lot we're obviously good friends with toast so i feel like we get really good preparation versus a style that patchy likes to play and you guys can see once we break that wall it's really hard to kind of shoot the middle of the map right now but once we get this wall broken it's like patchy can't really walk up <laughs> not really the smartest thing to do by me but like i don't know it's, it's it's a little bit difficult to sit back and just play i get two tapped by the damage gear and then patchy kind of wastes his roll now if patchy didn't do that i bet they do a ton of damage now the thing is his roll is really useless so he probably saw a good opportunity to roll in and was like hey i'm gonna take this but if he rolled over the water which gives you a little bit of extra range and then rolled onto czar and then a brock super came we were screwed but now you guys can see 
they did their best damage and now look at us we are just going to shoot that safe over and over and over again and in like five seconds seven seconds whatever it is we do 60 percent i mean we do a ton of damage and again patchy tries to roll he's just gonna get supered i hate it when we die with dog treats because dog treats is value dog treats is 20 percent more hp 20 percent more damage i don't know if that's the actual stats it's what i think it is and if you just hold with it there is nothing that they can do and we are continuously dying with it this game it's just it's just not good. Again, Zar goes down with it. You don't need to push up that hard. They can't push into us. That's all that matters. We don't have to do kills. We don't have to get damage. We just have to not let them do it. And I feel like we were pushing up way too hard these games. Regardless, that's going to be set number two. That's our map. You guys know we love safe zone. Zar looking great. If you guys notice, whenever Zar's on a camera, he's always like wiping his nose and stuff. I don't know if he does it here, but I swear this guy, like I lived with this guy for three months. I swear he's just sick. Like, he's just sick 24-7. Patchy with the one kill, 63 DPS. That is not exactly uh, what you're looking for. Um, FDOT kind of came across this a little brutally honest. He said, great gameplay from Bobby, Sands, Czar, Charles, and Chino. I th you know, a little bit toxic, FDOT, but he keeps some realness. Um, so, going to set number three, it's Goldarm. And this is what we would like to call a mid-off. I don't know if you guys exactly know what a mid-off is, but... Let's say, you know, someone is bad at something or not so great at something, you just call it mid. Like, you know, I'm not that good at Bonnie, my my Bonnie is mid. So, we, both of our teams are kind of horrible at knockout. Um, the, like, we're, you know, aggressive, you know, run it down, fast-paced teams. And you guys know knockout is kind of just like poke and, you know, not really, you know, no one dying first, all that stuff. So, it's it's a mid-off right now, you know? It's it's just who messes up less, basically. So, we have Gus, Bonnie, and Grom. We thought this was a really good comp. We thought we covered all all of our bases really well. Like, why do you have a Pam? But then they bring out the Sam, and it's like, oh, my God. Like, do we really have to deal with the Sam thing again? Like, I don't know. It's, it's just so annoying like no other region has to deal with this like dude it's knockout sit behind the wall play the thrower play the range like why are we getting ran at and this is not really looking too good for us it's a really important set set number three um patchy is going to run in a straight line czar hits one two three straight shots with grob and here i'm like stay alive stay alive you know we all run to the back because again once it's a 3v2 all you got to do is not die and you'll win the round you know shout out to all the power league randoms who die in a 3v2 you guys suck just uh just don't die we're gonna fast forward this a little bit because knockout's kind of boring and we're not trying to watch everything um you know 3v2 we won so something that i'm trying to do right here is get my what i call a big shot i don't know exactly what it's called now i want to get this shot for end game because that's when patchy's gonna push in and I'm, I'm just holding it i'm not shooting a single shot i got my big shot i'm waiting i'm waiting for patchy now it's not really the most fun thing to do in the world but you know, there's no point of hitting a Pam with it because I'm not going to kill the Pam. The Pam's just going to walk back. So we're definitely going to save it for Patchy. I hit him. We get the really easy kill. 3v2. Good Grom super. Sans jumps. I hit him. And shout out Charles, man. This was a nasty, nasty Pam gadget. I want you guys to watch this Pam play right here. He just full clips him to the face with two straight Pam shots. Um, I get pushed into a corner. I can't stay alive. Zar clutch it over there he's got to hit him one more time he does it and charles man clutch clutch plays by charles big shout out to him but yeah round three again we're kind of just in a poke fest right here we kind of threw that 3v2 really hard uh but that was more of charles just making an insane play and then chino also clutching up than it was us throwing um patchy's gonna make his way onto the grom he misses his gadget sand is gonna use his uh gadget to just kind of get more aggressive i missed that shot over there um onto chino which if i hit it we would have killed him so that's a really big deal because again you're changing it from a 3v3 to a 2v3 uh sans jumps i get my shield at a good time so you guys can see i don't have my shield when i jump but i know i'm one so and we're getting backed up so i'm telling him jump jump you know i'm screaming jump at him uh, i end up getting my shield i hit him with it but he doesn't really know who to go for i mean i think charles is too much hp anyways maybe we could have won if sans like full clipped everyone or, or landed on someone but that's the first 
game, I think you call it. I think it's a game. I think each individual thing is around. So the first game for Luminosity, this is a really bad mode for us. We suck at this mode. Big shout out to Zar. I think Zar played absolutely unreal on Grom outside of missing uh, Charles in that second round in the first game. I think he's just been tapping the amount of shots he's hit on the Sam, the amount of shots he's hit on the Barley. I mean, Zara's has just been playing unbelievable on Grom, especially with Toast. You know, shout out Toast and the Macharinos. But yeah, I got my big shot here. We're just going to get that Pam turret out of the way. It's not looking too good for us right now. We're kind of in a bad spot, uh, but Zar does get his super. He's going to get a hit over there on Charles, hit him with the super as well. Get the kill. He also hits Patchy. Then he goes down like that. It's just like unbelievable Grom gameplay right there. Like he hit four straight shots and it's not an easy brawler to hit shots on. So that's really good. Um, and it, this kind of goes back to what I was saying in the first set. I didn't talk about it that much in the second set with the Daryl, but the sixth pick value. You need brawlers that counter with sixth pick. You need brawlers that are going to carry with sixth pick. And for, throughout the first, you know, kind of three sets now, you guys are not seeing any value out of the sixth pick. So I don't know if that's bad drafting. I don't know exactly what that is, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Zara gets that super down. We're able to get one hit. He hits Charles over there. Sands is going to jump in. He trades. Zara gets the kill and then very, very, very clutch shot over there by Zar. We're going to go back and watch this again. Um, like if he doesn't hit this and i think this is more on patchy than it is on czar being good but if he doesn't hit that or if he throws his glove against the wall shout out to czar always rubbing his nose and stuff and sniffling um if he doesn't hit that shot we are not getting that kill and if we do not get that kill we're not winning that round so if we're not winning that round we're probably not winning this match but at this point we kind of get you know a little bit bored so i'm going to give sans the gadget and he's just going to run up right on patchy we're going to get the kill on patchy at the same time, Zara's doing amazing work on the other side, basically 2v1-ing. We get a really easy pinch over there, and Chino knows he's not winning this. I mean, I'm one-off super. We have, like, when I have my shield, like, 14k HP or something. Like, a Barley is not winning that. So he's just going to go into the smoke. He's not going to feed anything. Definitely the right play. Yeah, we're kind of doing our thing. We have good position over here. Apache is not doing anything. Like, like... It's a good pick. It counters us, but you have to do something. Like, it's a 3v2 right now. It's just a supercharger. He's just getting hit by stuff, giving us hits. Uh, I'm going to leave that ghost on the ground because I didn't think it would get any value there. Double hit plus the hit on super, on the Pam super by Grom. And then he also gets the hit on, pa like, I don't know, like, like full shout out Zara this, this set. Like, I didn't, I have not seen a Grom performance quite like this in a while. Big, big shout out to the nose wiper, Sniffler, Mr. Zar. That was uh, that was pretty nuts, and we're cracking jokes in the VC. You see a nice little smile from Zar, uh, but yeah, huge set win for us over there. Uh, moving forward, uh, dude, 266 DPS is I didn't even realize this, but Zar's DPS is more than the entire team's combined, and he's a Grom, which is not easy to hit shots on. So if you kind of take that in, that's ridiculous. That is just craziness. So, you know, huge shout out to the homies are. Um, they're going to first pick Mr. P, which is kind of what we wanted them to do. We knew we didn't want to face a Shelly. They're really good at Amber. We didn't want to face Amber. And then Sans hates Crow. And I couldn't really fit Crow into comps. Like, I didn't want to first pick Crow because I didn't think it was strong enough. Because Brawlers that are taken early, like you guys can see right now, Mr. P, RT, uh, Squeak that we just took, Brawlers that they banned, Gus, Bonnie, B, all of those brawlers are good into Crow. But at the same time, Crow is super annoying to face. So everywhere that I wanted to pick it when I was thinking of comps beforehand, I felt like I was taking it a little bit too early. And it would just get countered. They take Pam. Now, this is their biggest mistake here. So we knew that they would take Pam. I think a big issue with the drafts of Luminosity, at least since I have started drafting again this year, is they're really predictable. Like, they play the same group of Brawlers. We know what they're going to play going into every set. Every single set that we've played outside of the last pick, Sam, we basically knew exactly what they were going to take. And when you're picking like that with such confidence, you can kind of take weird picks. Like, no one takes Squeak 2-3, but because we knew they were going to take Pam, we could kind of go ahead and take it, which kind of puts them in a weird position. Um, I probably shouldn't be saying this on a video where Patchy and them can watch it and, you know, learn from it, but whatever. And then... 
Last pick, Carl. You guys know Zars. Carl is insane. I've been working hard on the Carl, you know. I don't know if I'm up to Zars level yet, but I kind of want to play it. But for now, Zars, you know, just that guy on the Carl. So we're going to let him, Carl. Uh, Sans is just a menace on the RT, man. Sans is, Sans is unreal on RT. So by default, you know, I got to play Squeak. But I do got to say this. Out of every brawler that I've played in the entire game, in the entire 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 game that I don't play and I like by don't play I mean I don't play regularly or I don't scrim with it or something like that squeak has to be the easiest brawler in the game like come on anyone who mains squeak like find a different main like this brawler is the most no skill just like easy brawler I've ever seen in my life like if you're a main squeak stop it I just put a slow on one side and I'm just shooting another side and I die here because I go too close to Patchy, but who cares? Because Zara's just going to gadget it up. He's going to get the kill on Mr. P. Sands with the super pass, and that is an easy goal. And I mean, I mean, I did my job on Squeak. You know, I slowed aside. I poked. I mean, I died, but we scored. Again, they're going to throw the, the porter, so I'm like, no, I'm not dealing with that. You know, shout out to Toast. Uh, we did a scrim versus Toast, and he kept just like Mandy supering our Mr. P porters. And it's like, who does that? Who uses a Mr. P super? I mean, not a Mr. P super, sorry, a Mandy super on porters. But we didn't win the game because we didn't have any porters. And if a Mr. P doesn't have any porters, it's like, what, did, what, you know, what does Mr. P even do? I just wanted my super again. You know, I didn't have to stay alive. Sometimes it's better to just die. That was one of the cases. Um, so I passed the ball up. I told Sans to super pass it to Zar. I think we could have scored over there. I don't think Zar had the vision. If he just goes left and then, I mean, I don't know. I don't know because like a penguin can't stop a ball right um and again you know i'm a squeak the most no skill brawler in the game i'm just gonna slow aside i don't know why i'm even roasting squeak this much i just feel like it's so easy like look at me like what do i even do like like i did nothing this game but at the same time i took out porters i took out speed turrets i won lanes i got kills like come on now like you know we're on game point here bro is always sniffling look at him it's been months dude like this guy's got to get checked out he's got to go to the doctor or something but anyways yeah, match point here. We kept switching so we can get me on the stew. We don't want Zar on the stew at all. Um, so you guys can see they switch. So we're like, no, we're not dealing with that. Let's just switch with them. And, you know, kind of the whole point of me playing stew is not giving Patchy a hit. Because when stew gets that one hit, it's really good. So you just try and, like, not give it that one hit. You guys saw I kind of messed up in the first game by going too close. So I'm staying far away. Like, like shout out to the squeak mains, you know. We staying far away. We're slowing sides, you know. Look at that. Bop! Look at that slow right there. Now he can't walk there anymore. High skill gameplay. You know, I'm shooting. I'm not even shooting people. I'm just shooting areas, you know. Very high skill gameplay right there. Um, we get the kill. Zar gets the kill. Sans gets the kill. Excuse me, sir, Mr. Zar. I want this goal. Move out of the way. And now we're on uh, match points. So we're going to move forward a little bit. And this is probably the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. If I'm going to be honest. So at this point, I have two squeak slows. We have full position. We have outdraft. We finally get a good six pick, which none of us have had the entire time. Sands throwing up the pin. Like, we know it's over. We know we won this game. Sands goes down. Like, all we have to do is hold at this point. Boys, 30 seconds left. I have a squeak slow. I'm going to use my slow. I hit my super on patchy. Like, there is no way the other team can win this game. That's it. We have won monthly finals. Congratulations to us. Zara's like, nah, you know, I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in, guys. And then Sans goes into this RT mode. Like, I wanted to kill these guys. And at this point, I'm just trying to stall time. Not too much time left. I throw the ball away. I probably should have squeak super or squeak gadgeted Charles here. But I'm not taking any blame for this. I refuse to take any blame whatsoever for this. Because I end up going down trying to waste time. Patchy gets... Almost the kill on Charles or on Zara. We get the kill, but then with one second left, Charles walks it in. Like, are you kidding me, boys? Like, we had the win. Just sit behind the wall, you know? Like, oh, I don't know. But anyways, you know, we got the RT in overtime. We have the squeak. You guys can see his high skill gameplay. I'm shooting stuff from behind a wall. I walk forward. I hit one shot. I just randomly chuck a super, you know, complete RNG. I get two hits on it. So then I auto aim people. Uh, we get the kill. Sands is also tapping a lot. We get another tap over there. We're hitting a lot of shots. 
get the kill over there and then sans is going to super charles that's a really or i mean zara's gonna super charles it's a really easy kill patchy almost catches that ball but there we go we end up scoring that is a win for us and smiles all around zar being a little bit toxic on cam going to sleep but yeah that's gonna be it for our video today here guys it's a big win for us so what that does here's the leaderboard right now so luminosity still in first so the way the math works is we still have to win both monthly finals because even if we win the next one with the way the region's looking so far you guys can see us and luminosity are kind of way above everyone else so the way the region's looking so far is us or luminosity is going to win so if we don't win both luminosity is going to win one and they're going to get the world spot and we're going to get the lcq spot but we're on a two win streak we've been playing a lot better thank you guys for supporting us all that stuff uh but yeah it's gonna be it for today so i'll be back with more frequent videos again i was just in los angeles i was not home this is this is one of the difficulties with my up uploading schedule is just that i do a lot of traveling for competitive so stuff is going to happen there are going to be breaks like this but as i told you guys before i am committed to the youtube so um you guys will see me just sometimes it'll be a little bit of breaks like that but yeah with that being said, love you guys. I'll see you guys again probably in a couple days. Peace out, boys. I'll see you guys later. Hey, you. Yes, you there watching this on your phone. Have you ever wanted to be the best, the most handsome, the most loved player on your team, and support your favorite creator at the same time? Well, I have good news. You can be all of that and more by using code Bobby. But you have to do it now because this is a limited time offer. Use code Bobby at any Supercell Games store.